Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. Another beautiful summer day here in Rhode Island. Let me quickly give you the uh, lineup. We will be going to Balzano, Italy with Rebecca Cotto da Silva. And then shortly after, we're going to have Ray Two Hawks Watson on uh, a leader in uh, the in both Native American and African American community here in Rhode Island an outspoken and strong leader on issues of equity and social justice. And then uh, we'll have Dr. Michael Fine on. Last but not least, Governor Raimondo's press briefing will be on at 1 o'clock. So an action-packed day at Go Local Live. Let's go to Balzano, Italy uh, for the, uh, the weekly update. Uh, Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, as always, for having me. So here in the United States, um, a number of populated states, Florida, Texas, California, Arizona, some of the largest states in the country are seeing very strong increases in the number of cases as well as the number of hospitalizations. In Texas, I think they're just under 7,000 reported cases yesterday, and the U.S. is now hitting its highest number of total cases on a daily basis now. Uh, there are reports that the EU is considering limiting uh, flights from the United States. What have you heard about that, or is that just sort of political speak? Yeah, I mean, nobody really, first of all, the EU can give a recommendation and then the individual countries set the rules. So the individual countries will be most likely to follow the EU recommendation, but um, they don't have to. So. You know, there are countries who've already said, yes, we're going to let in Americans. Um, who knows if that'll change because the EU finally pronounced, but we'll see. Um, as, yeah, I mean, as Italy tries to recover economically and tries to rebuild its tourism, summer tourism, is it likely that they would shut out Americans? Wouldn't they be seeking any sort of American uh, tourists that they can get? Yeah, you know, the thing is, is that you've got Americans on TV refusing to wear masks and you've got, you know, one of the things here is that if there's a rule, it's a pretty big deal if you don't follow it. Um, I don't think that most Americans were necessarily subject to the sort of military, start, this was actually military um, enforcement that we had of our lockdown. And the literal, like, you're allowed to go out for a gulp of air type of lockdown. And so there is much more freedom now. But if you have to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask. Hopefully, people going to another country would respect that. But it's one of those things where we see the numbers, too. We know what happened to us when our numbers were looking like that here in Italy. And so there is definitely a a balancing calculation um, being done. I know one thing that some people are saying is uh, it shouldn't be passport-based necessarily. It shouldn't be nationality-based. It should be where you were. If there's an American living in China, you shouldn't block that person if that person's not been exposed to COVID or is in a part of China that's not had a, a flare recently. And that's you know, something I had been saying from the beginning, like, you know, when I, I passed through Zurich and Milan on February 8th, and in Zurich, they said everyone with the Chinese passport comes for an additional inspection. And I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> what if this person with the Chinese passport hasn't been to China in 10 years? I've, right. I haven't been to the US in uh, three or four, I don't know. So yeah, the thing people are debating is more that maybe it shouldn't be passport based because you could get the tourist tourism dollars from Americans living abroad. It's not a lot. It's definitely not the volume you get from Americans living in America, but then people aren't necessarily like, Hey, yeah, bring your COVID-19 over after not wearing a mask in your own country for so no, long. No, absolutely. Uh, you know, your, your approach seems more logical, might take a little more work, but a lot more logical. Listen, I walked into the office this morning, it's about a mile and a quarter, and uh, I probably saw 40 people, uh, a number of construction sites, a number of uh, uh, sidewalks being redone, some other. I, I saw two out of 40 people wearing their mask. Uh, and in most cases, most people didn't even have their mask around their neck. So maybe 10 had their mask around their neck. So in Rhode Island, 
adherence to a mask policy is uh, weak at best. Uh, and part of that is the summer, and part of it is that we've had a decrease in cases. But, you know, decreases in cases can be increases in cases in just a matter of quick days if there's a plane that comes in from one of those places that are infected and uh, spark a whole nother uh, infection uh, in rapid pace. Um, l let's go over, speaking of tourism, to Sicily. Sicily uh, is co almost completely dependent on tourism, uh, and it is proposed to supplement 75 uh, million euros to augment whatever is spent by tourists. In other words, they're gonna pay for every third ho uh, hotel night, they're gonna pay for visits to museums, a whole series of incentives to get people to return to Sicily for the tourist season. Will that work? I hope so. Um, you know, I'd, I'd go buy two, get one free. You know, I and I'd be allowed to go to Italy, uh, Sicily. Sorry, at this point. So, yeah, I, as, you know, you never know, right? If okay, you spend the seventy-five million, you're expecting to make it back in other expenditures. Um, but it's Sicily's not only dependent on tourism; it's dependent on summer tourism, right? There is even a rule in place uh, stating that there have to be a certain number of flights going to Sicily in the winter because people live there and you can't deny them that service. It's a basic service, kind of like a phone line. So there's a, a complicated structure, but the company offering the flights actually gets reimbursed a bit from the other companies because those planes need to go because that's a basic service getting on and off the island. So it's not, you know, Sicily isn't just like, it's not a year-round destination. It is a summer destination. And as soon as it gets too cold and as soon as people stop having summer breaks and the like, the island's empty. It's so empty that no one wants to even offer flights there. Sardinia is a little different. It's sort of where the beautiful people from, from Europe go. Uh, it is, seems to be much more back in motion and is attracting uh, much of its usual uh, summer tourism. Uh, is, is it getting too busy in places like Sardinia? Um, you know, from what we've seen here, if you're wearing a mask, it can be busy. Um, so I think if people are being safe, I think the biggest problem with that, and maybe the word problem is too strong, but technical issue is wearing a mask and drinking because that's what people like to do, right? They like to go drink. And um, people in Europe very, smoke a lot. so. It's interesting sometimes you're, you know, that, that move that people do when they're going into a restaurant, they take the last pull and then they throw the cigarette on the ground and exhale like into the restaurant door. <laughs> I was like, man, that's, you know, I never quite, I just always would think of it as, man, is it, you really need, like the timing really has to be like that. But now I'm like, man, you're straight blowing hard at a place that somebody else might come very close to. Um, we talked a little bit before we came on uh, your daughter, Olympia. Her father is in uh, Texas, uh, wants to come, and it's as complicated as complicated to be. Walk us through the complexity of him having dual citizenship and trying to get over to Italy. Yeah, well, his citizenship isn't um, European at this time. And so he, he was actually in Germany when all the borders closed, and he was able to stay there for a while in the hopes that Italy would let him in. And it just never did. And then every time that they would call, he so they would say, well, if you want to come in for family reasons, first of all, it was you can't. And then it was like, well, who's your family here? You know, well, um, you know, my wife is a student at the university. Well, university is closed, so why is she still here? <laughs> it's like, no, no, I actually have, you know, a residence permit until a certain date. And they're like, no, but the university is closed, so... And it's one of those things where it would have been illegal for them to take any action against me, but it wouldn't have mattered. And so, you know, it, it was one of those things where I was like, well, thank goodness that call dropped because, <laughs> um, you know, what's her name? Where does she live? This doesn't sound right that they're still a student. And that's, you know, that reminds you just how tough our lockdown was. 
is that they, um, you know, and it was illegal here, but one of the first thing my province did was eject all foreigners. And it was like, well, then we're going to eject all non-residents, which would include Italians, but was much more obviously geared at foreign nationals. Um, and the country was like, no, you can't do that. And, you know, it definitely would have caused problems with the country and with the EU. Um, but it's one of those things that that was the reaction here. That was the response here. And, um, yeah, I've seen people be able to come and go. Uh, grown sons, 22-year-olds were able to come in from Austria and go back. But uh, even even that was not an option for quite a while. So he, you know, left Germany and now he's trying to come back. But it's, you know, his, his two citizen, neither of his citizenships is um, European, although he's got a birthright European citizenship. So we'll see what happens. Um, it's, some countries are letting people uh, accelerate that request and, and uh, given these circumstances. Um, let's talk a little bit about daily life. Um, we've seen it here and as I express, you know, few people wearing their masks on a regular basis, certainly on the on a outside, um, on the street and, and walking around or running or anything like that. Um, in Italy, as you've hit high highs and now have come way down, uh, where are we in the daily life of the average Italian, obviously in the region that you're in? What's it look like? Is it back to pre-pandemic days in touch and feel? Or is it still conscious, aware, people wearing masks, et cetera? Yeah, so people working uh, have to wear masks and have to protect, and by and large, they do. Sometimes you'll see that the nose isn't covered, even though the mask is on. I think one good thing I saw in this long publication of the new rules that uh, if you're expected to be in sort of constant contact with someone, that you should have a visor and that that other person should wear a mask. So there are some people who are wearing visors now. Um, so you go, the, the people working all have protection. I think that, you know, the authorities could drum up a lot of money from people if they wanted to, just going around and handing out citations for uh, not being in compliance. I don't think that that is the desire at this time because that happened already so much when people, you know, stepped a meter over the radius that they were allowed to be um, from their homes. So I, but I, when you go out, you see children playing, you see things that are normal, but then you also see much less of it. So um, you do see people going out and enjoying things, but it's maybe a quarter or a third of the people. And I saw just uh, something the other day, it said, you know, two thirds of Italians are still very worried about COVID. Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, uh, you're four weeks ahead of us. Uh, you're looking, uh, Italy is looking smarter than we are right at the moment as we start to see a massive increase in the number of cases and the number of hospitalizations. Uh, you get the last word, what should Americans know? Yeah, I think just the, any idea of American exceptionalism when it comes to COVID is just, people have to throw it out the window. People are always saying, oh, but Italy's got this older population, Italy's got this smoker population. That's why it's, you know, in the sense that it's not gonna happen to us. And yes, it's happening. <laughs> um, so really stay up on things um, and stay safe because it's this disease, you know, it's a respiratory illness, but then it's also causing problems with blood thickness and they don't know how it interacts with other coronaviruses. You see now uh, Brazil is getting hammered with it. And as we just entered into our summer earlier this week, they just entered into their winter. So we might even be in a period of reprieve and that's something that is, would be terrifying to a Texan, I think, at this point. So I think that, you know, uh, as I say every week, let's follow the safety measures that are demonstrated to work. And we've all got to take care of each other. This isn't one of those things where, uh, you know, I, I'm taking care of myself and that's it. It's like, if I don't wear a mask, I'm not taking care of you, potentially. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there, there's no, you know, this is a, a team sport and we'll only win 
working together. Uh, Rebecca Cotto da Silva from Balzano, Italy, thank you so much. For everybody else, uh, Raymond Two Hawks Watson coming up at 11 o'clock. Dr. Fine at 12 noon, Governor Raimondo's press briefing at one o'clock. Stay tuned, stay safe, everyone, on this beautiful June day. Thank you.